Happy New Year, Mission Gathering San Diego. If you don't know who I am, my name is Rich McCullen, and I am the transitional lead pastor here at Mission Gathering San Diego. And I'm honored to be with you your first Sunday of the new year. So let's begin. Mission Gathering, as I started the 
the virtual cast uh, off, I, I said, Happy New Year. And we are in a new year. Uh, if you were like me, um, you could not wait for this year to be over. And it's been a difficult year, a very, very difficult year for the world. Not just for you, not just for me, but when, when I say, and you will know, and you will agree with me, that this has been a challenging and extremely difficult year, a difficult season for our world, for um, our country, and for people that we know and love, our community, our churches. Uh, it's been tough. It's been a tough year. And this week I was getting ready, just, you know, doing life. And every time uh, I have a few minutes to take my time and getting ready, I'm not rushed to another Zoom uh, meeting. I'm not one of those people that can just uh, put on a nice shirt and comb my hair and go to a Zoom meeting in my shorts or whatever. I'm not that person. I have to get up. I have to shower. I have to organize things. I have to mentally prepare for my meetings. And, and so I was getting ready and I had a few extra moments. I was able to listen to some music during um, getting myself ready for my first Zoom meeting of the day. And the song Turn, Turn, Turn came on. And that song has always meant a lot to me because one, I'm a person with spiritual uh, life and spiritual journeys. And so uh, Turn, Turn, Turn is a song about seasons and seasons of life, but it's literally uh, taken from Ecclesiastes 3 that some many scholars believe Solomon wrote and others don't, but really in, in the all, the, when it comes down to it, it doesn't matter right now. Uh, but that song is very powerful and very meaningful for millions upon millions of people, and it has been. So of course, when I think about this is, this, is, this is truth for me, how am I going to turn and live into 2021? How am I going to leave 2020 behind um, and try to move on to something better? And I was listening to this song, and I was like, I need to know more about this song first. That's how I, that's how I am. And then secondly, do I really want to leave what 2020 has done behind? And I want to challenge us with the concept of, no, we don't. We want to embrace what 2020 has done for us as a world, as a country, and us as individuals. How 2020 has challenged us in so many areas of our lives. And to try to just push it away as we, do, as we did the countdown and welcomed in the new year, as we, as we just try so hard to just look toward the light at the end of the tunnel of this, this, this dark season we have lived in this pandemic and watching lives just uh, destroyed and jobs and all the things. I, I, I don't need to go through all of that, but we, we are so anxious to move out of 2020. And I understand it. So am I. But I was listening to the song and I, first I got, I got to tell you how this song came about. Uh, it's written by Pete Seeger, not Bob Seeger, Pete Seeger. And back in the day, like this is the 1960s, long time ago, uh, especially for our millennials who who are tuning in long time ago uh, this this writer he wrote the song uh, turn 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 he was a folk singer and an activist and he recorded a, the demo of turn 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 in 1961 that's forever ago right it feels like forever ago uh, not that I would know I would not know I was not born yet but but anyway um, and so he, he developed this, this song and sent it to his agent. And he took this song right out of the Bible, Ecclesiastes 3, 1 through 8. 
And then he got a letter from his agent. And he says, uh, from his publisher actually. And he says, and the agent publisher said, Pete, I cannot sell these protest songs that you write. I don't know if you know this, but Turn, Turn, Turn uh, is a protest song uh, against injustices that are happening throughout the world, it was, uh, throughout the country that we were facing at that time, the very difficult time in the 60s, early 60s as a country. And, it's, and it says that Pete, Pete said to the, uh, to the person interviewing him, says, I became extremely angry that my, my publisher would say, I can't sell these songs. And he said, I, I, I sat down so angry and I wrote uh, the song Turn, Turn, Turn in 15 minutes. It's a, I mean, the melody, the, the way it's laid out is just phenomenal. And, and then he just decided that he was going to send it and saying, this is what I do. This is how I write. And I write songs of protest. And if you don't like it, find someone else. And his publisher wrote him back the next week and said, it's wonderful. Just what I'm looking for, okay? And within two months, his, pub his publisher sold it to the birds who made it more of, who took it out of the folk gyre of music um, and brought it into more classic rock, which the station I listen to sometimes. And yeah. That's how that came to be, that song, Turn, Turn, Turn. And so as I was reading about this song, and I was thinking about the scripture, uh, Ecclesiastics, and three, I was thinking about this season, the season that we've been in. There's one thing we can say about this season that could be easily just titled 2020, right? The season of 2020. The one thing we can say about this time in our lives uh, is that collectively we all were in this season together. We were all in this together. We still are in this thing together. The, uh, the vaccine is still months away for all of us, for in all of us receiving it. Uh, we're, we're months away from this. And so there wasn't this other part of the world that wasn't necessarily experiencing the hardships of COVID-19. There wasn't people down the street that didn't in some way, uh, in some way was impacted by this time, this season. And so I just, thinking about that, I jumped uh, at, my, in, on, at my desk, my home office, and I decided to uh, look up the scripture again. It, it is an amazing scripture. And I, I want to read this scripture to you. Tom will have it up on the screen uh, there for you. But Ecclesiastes 3, 1 through 8. And if you need to close your eyes uh, and meditate on these words and just think about what you've gone through, what our communities have gone through, what our country has gone through, and what the world has gone through in this season. Um, and it's, it's easily, it, it, it's titled... Um, of course, a time for everything. And it goes like this. There is a time for everything, a season for every activity under the heavens, a time to be born and a time to die, a time to plant and a time to uproot, a time to kill and a time to heal, a time to tear down and a time to build up, a time to weep and a time to laugh, time to mourn and a time to dance, a time to scatter stones and a time to gather them, a time to embrace and a time to refrain from embracing, a time to search and yes, a time to give up, a time to keep and a time to throw away, a time to tear and a time to mend, a time to be silent and a time to speak, a time to love and a time to hate, a time for war and a time for peace. Now when Solomon was writing 
this. He was contemplating life, the ups and downs. He wasn't, he wasn't condoning war. He wasn't, uh, God's not condoning hate or anything like that. But we know as mere humans that this is life. Everything that I just read that was written thousands of years ago is life. And when you think of 2020, well, you think about everything that I read from the scriptures on Ecclesiastes, from Ecclesiastes, everything we lived in 2020, all of this, every bit of it. It's like we did not get a break. It's like you did not get a break. And so for this New Year message, I've done New Year's message for year, messages for years. I mean, well, for years. I won't go into detail how long I've been pastoring. But I've been pastoring for a little while. And every New Year's, uh, every, the first Sunday in the New Year, every pastor has to figure out how we're going to tell people to take on this year, charge ahead, and move on from the past and grow into the future. Now that all sounds wonderful, and there is truth to all of that. But in actionality, in actionality, I, I mean, I want to challenge us not to so quickly leave behind 2020, not so quickly leave behind what we've learned, what you've learned, what I've learned in 2020. Because if we try to just move on and go back to the way they were, the things, the way the things were, the way we did everything, we will lose that season. We will lose this time of growth. We will lose this time of learning how the simple things actually make us happy. And that's the challenge, right? To leave this year, to move into 21, knowing that we have been through a lot and we cannot just leave it behind. We have to learn from this. We have to learn. It's been a turning point for all of us. The whole situation, the whole nightmare, all the challenges, they've been a turning point. And I guess what I want to challenge us with is this. As we turn into this new year, as we live into this new year, not only leaning into what we've gone through and trying to learn from these difficult times, what are we going to turn into be in 21? What are we going to do to be better? What have we learned in 2020? And how are we going to take those things into 21 and be a stronger follower of Christ? A solid friend, a better parent. What are those things that we are going to do, that we are going to choose to do to be better, to be more? If you have... Uh, had the, I don't know if it was the privilege or the nightmare of me being your pastor uh, the last several years, you know that there's something that I speak about all the time. This theology that I live into uh, since I was a young guy uh, to who I am now. And that is this. God has given us the power of free will. Meaning God has empowered you and I to choose, to be people of choice. You and I, we can choose to learn, to grow from 2020, or we can choose to stay in a place of being bitter, a place of sorrow, a place of just disappointment. Or we can choose to know that this is a new time, a new day, a new year, but more importantly, this is a new season. And how will you and I choose to live into this?
How will you and I choose to live what we've learned, to live into that, and to take it with us to make us more, to make us better people, communities, people invested in each other. One of my uh, favorite scriptures uh, in, this, in the uh, uh, epistles is in Romans 5. And it's where Paul is talking about life can suck, basically. And this is his challenge to all of us, to the Christians uh, that were under a major persecution. You, I mean, you think we've experienced any persecution? No, we have not. Major persecution as followers of Jesus. And this was his challenge to them. We can rejoice too. This is verse three. We can rejoice. It's a, ch it's a choice. I'm not talking about being, you know, don't fake it till you make it. That's not what I'm necessarily saying. But we can choose joy, we can choose peace, and we can choose hope. And we can definitely choose faith. That's what faith is, it's making this conscious decision that moves our spirit person into living into these choices. And he goes on to write, when we run into problems and trials, my goodness, Yes, we have. Yes, we have. For we, for we know that they help us develop endurance. If we forget 2020, if we try to block it out, how about the endurance that 2020 gave you and I? Right? Don't forget that. And the endurance develops strength, strength of character. And character strengthens our what? Our confident hope of salvation. Confident hope of salvation. That salvation means new things are going to happen. Uh, a new day is coming. Uh, change is taking place. And if we leave behind 2020 in just a, a negative way and just try to just block it out and not take away the, the endurance that it's built, which has then built character in you and I, and character then develops hope, and hope builds confidence, right? And it goes on to say, he wrote in verse 5, this hope will not lead to disappointment. That's quite a sentence. I, in fact, I hesitated to even read this. Because we've had and have tried to have a lot of hope in 2020, and we've been disappointed throughout 2020, right? But I'm talking in a bigger sense, that hope deep down within you and I can give us, well, it can give us the eye of faith to see beyond 2020 to learn from 2020 and see and, and grow from what was there to what is now. That's what confidence is. Confidence is something that it's going to get better. And that's what we have to live into. And then Paul writes, for we know how dearly God loves us. That's where a lot of us struggle. Does God really love me? Because if God loved me, this would not be happening. I would not have lost my job. I would not have lost someone that I love. Uh, I would be able to pay my bills. But when you think about God in the flesh, Jesus, there was times that Jesus struggled financially there was times that Jesus struggled with a lot of disappointment. There were times when Jesus struggled with, well, complete betrayal, right? And that was God here on planet Earth. So God's never promised you and I no problems, no challenges. 
But what God has promised is the Holy Spirit will guide us and the Holy Spirit will strengthen us if we choose hope. And the Holy Spirit will help us become better. Better. A better human for the people we love and for the people we will grow and get to know down the road, right? So that's the choice that you have. That's the choice that I have to choose hope, to choose faith as we live into 21. Not forgetting, not forgetting what we've learned, not forgetting that we are all stronger today because of 2020, but learning from that and growing into what God has in store for you and I. They're challenging times and they're ahead of us. So how will we choose to live in 2021? To grow, to be more, to have learned, and to take those trials and persecutions and hard times that we've all faced in 20 into 21 with hope, with hope. Let's go to communion. The night that the, the Last Supper took place, the night that Jesus was with his closest friends, um, Jesus was facing very difficult times. His friends were betraying him. They were all going to basically leave him except the women. Um, and he was going to die. The next day. Now that's that's pretty challenging. That's that's quite a 2020, right? But even at his last supper, that we now call communion, Eucharist. Um, even then, God chose hope. God chose love for you and I, for the future. And that's why communion is so important to the mission gathering churches, the Christian church disciples of Christ, is that it reminds us every week of that hope and that love that God chose. Even in the face of such adversity and darkness that Jesus was feeling and experiencing that night into the morning, up on the cross, he chose forgiveness. He chose love. He chose hope. So as we do communion in this virtual way, right? Uh, some of you might need to uh, scramble and <laughs> grab some elements. Um, you have to decide during this time, this holy practice that's been going on for 2,000 years, this holy practice to remember, to choose the things that Jesus chose on his most darkest night and day. And I know a lot of us are facing very difficult, challenging times, but we have to choose hope. And the Holy Spirit will get us through. He took the bread and he said, this is my body, broken. God's body broken for a broken world that can know healing, fulfillment, grace and love and he took the wine and he poured it into the chalice and he said this is my love this is the love of God this is the love of God and God's love will pour out to all of the world that we may know love that we may know grace and peace and hope. 
the God that could have changed everything in those few hours chose to walk through those difficult times. We are on the other side. We're almost through this. But always remember you're loved and always remember that the Holy Spirit will give you the strength, the strength to be more, to be better, to choose hope and faith. Partake these elements of grace and know that you are loved. Let us pray. Gracious, loving God, thank you. Thank you for these uh, amazing people, this amazing church, all that we're going through, the challenges, the ups and downs, the tribulations, the adversities, and yes, such a dark year, a dark season. So gracious Lord, as we partake these elements, may we turn into 2021 learning and growing and taking from 2020 what you want us to learn, how you want us to better ourselves. And may we turn into wholeness. May we turn into choosing forgiveness and choosing love and choosing grace for everyone in our lives. And though that may be difficult, we ask that you help us to do that. It's in the name of Jesus we pray. The body broken and the love of God for you. Partake. Of 
justice and joy for every one boy a place at the table to live without fear and simply to be to work to speak out to witness and worship for every one born the right to be free and God will delight when we're creators of justice and joy God will delight when we're creators of justice, justice and joy. Well, once again, Happy New Year. And this new year is a new day for the world, for our country, and for you. So the choice is yours. How will you turn into faith and hope and love? How will you do that? Please reach out to your church. You can see the links below. Uh, if this is your church, please give. We are, of course, through these challenging times that I've been talking about, need your continual faithful giving. That, uh, that means a lot to the, to the ministries here. At mission gathering we can continue with this message the message of love and grace for all that we may continue with that giving a message that no matter where you are and what you've done God has not and will never give up on you and that's my message to you as you head into 21 know that God will never give up God has never given up and God is with you even right now and God is with us as we head into 21. Again, Happy New Year, and uh, we'll see you next week here at Mission Gathering. God bless you, everyone.